welcome to The Rich Report, a podcast with news and information on high-performance computing. Today, my guests are from Altair. We have Venkat Parameshwar and Dan Stevenson. Uh, they're going to show us a little bit of a demo here about uh, HyperWorks. So welcome to the show, guys. Hey, thanks for having us, Rich. Well, great. It's my pleasure. So, Dan, what I was thinking is we'd launch into the uh, uh, demo here, and we'd follow that with uh, Q&A. So uh, why don't you tell us more about uh, the HyperWorks Compute Manager? Okay, uh, that sounds good. So um, kind of an introduction to the solution a little bit. This is HyperWorks Enterprise Compute Manager. And specifically what this is is uh, it is the first application in what will be a series, a series of applications available under the HyperWorks Enterprise umbrella which will be um, web-based tools that are geared towards um, job submission, eventually process management and simulation management, and even beyond. So kind of getting back here to Compute Manager, Compute Manager focuses on the ability to submit GAE simulations and other simulations to high-performance clusters, um, and the ability to uh, very simply submit those jobs, very easily manage those jobs, and monitor uh, aspects of those jobs, and then even work with the files of those jobs while the uh, jobs are actually running, and um, actually after the, uh, the job has finished running. So I'm, I'm here at the login screen. <clears throat> I log in, and here you see uh, the monitoring page. And kind of going into a little bit here, is uh, just kind of the three different facets of Compute Manager that should be taken into consideration. You have uh, the monitoring page, which is what you see here. And this uh, gives you the ability to monitor all of the jobs that have been submitted to your uh, organization's cluster, as well as you know view your own jobs and filter them in, di in different ways. Um, you have the ability to submit jobs using uh, applications that were made available by the site's administrator. Um, you can quickly uh, switch between these jobs or to do these applications and uh, very easily add your input files and uh, resource requests to it and submit it to your cluster. You also have the uh, ability to uh, manage remote files on the cluster itself. And this, what you're seeing here is kind of a dedicated view or a dedicated focus of, on, uh, you know, working with remote files. But you'll also notice that remote file browsing functionality is actually uh, spread across the entire interface. And I'll dive into a little bit more of that as the demo continues. So kind of starting off, um, really, you know, at, at the starting point of Compute Manager for most users will be, uh, you know, where you go to submit an actual job. And so starting off in the job submission page, you know, as I was saying before, you have uh, this ability to select between uh, applications that uh, your site the site administrator would have um, installed. Here, for example, we have a, a simple batch measure application that, uh, you know, works with uh, Altair's batch measure solver, uh, as well as an Optistruct um, application. And we even have a generic um, application that actually comes uh, with the solution that allows individuals to submit uh, job scripts. Like they may have been more accustomed to on the command line, say they were used to writing job scripts in Perl or TCL or even Bash. Um, some engineers are very comfortable with this form of job submission. And so this application actually makes it very easy to um, simply attach, um, as you'll see I'm going to do here, Let's see if I go to my home directory. I can uh, very easily attach just a um, simple job script to it and uh, launch it from here, as I'll show in this demonstration. I just browse the remote files that I have uh, located on the cluster, and I can uh, grab one of my Perl uh, job scripts that I've written. And I even have an option that I've added here to uh, pass maybe an additional argument. I can easily, you know, uh, add uh, job files to include with my job. Say uh, my job script depends on these files. Give it a simple name and submit. I have Compute Manager tailored to automatically direct me to. Uh, 
uh, the monitoring page after I've successfully submitted a job. So kind of moving back over here, back to job submission to go into more details. I, I submitted a very simple job using PBS Job App. I can submit OfficeStrip jobs as well. Um, uh, some of the cool features about applications, and one of the things that we tried to take into consideration with Compute Manager was um, having the interface and the workflow itself kind of start to tailor itself to an individual's um, usage. So by that, what I mean is one thing that we've uh, taken into consideration is oh, some of these applications can become very complicated. Like in our examples that we're seeing here, these are really pretty simple. Um, they're asking just some basic information. Um, and you have the option to see more advanced information, but you know, for you know, some of these um, um, applica applications that can be created uh, uh, for an individual organization um, could be very uh, complex. There could be lots of questions that get asked, and so um, an engineer might find themselves filling in the same uh, filling in the same responses every single time they submit a job, and that can become pretty tedious. So we have the ability to save um, commonly filled, commonly uh, inputted fields as profiles. So if I, you know, typically requested two chunks and always two cores, maybe I'm always selecting um, a gig of RAM. Um, these are things that are common every time I submit a PBS job app. Uh, maybe I'd like to save this as a profile. And so now, from this point forward. I could actually ignore the list of applications, and then I could really just use my own profiles, my own tailored ver variations of these applications. And so this should help speed up um, my job submission workflow. There's another aspect uh, worth mentioning too, is that Compute Manager uh, remembers the various ways that you've laid out, um, the ways that you've laid out your uh, interface. And so this kind of is really nice because I get to jump into job monitoring here, where I can really show you the benefits of this. So here on job monitoring, you know, may, you know, maybe you're in a large organization, there's lots of users, there's lots of jobs, and it can be kind of a mess to uh, sort through this, uh, this stuff. So we have nice filters on the left where you're actually able to very easily say, I just want to see my job, or maybe I only want to see my off-struck job, or maybe I only want to see you know, my successful object strip jobs, or everybody's, in this case, as I'm clicking successful object strip jobs. Um, Compute Manager will actually remember this, these, uh, these um, filters that I have applied, and if I log out and log back in, Compute Manager will not only remember um, what page I was last on, but how I had that page laid out. Um, and so basically just, it's only natural to assume that over time, um, as the user starts to do things like add columns that uh, he or she uh, has preferences to for, or uh, maybe uh, groups those columns in certain ways, um, the uh, Compute Manager will eventually just start to remember all of this, and eventually people's workflow will be very simple, very quick, and very fast between profiles and the uh, layout actually remember remembering itself. So kind of focusing on some of the details about jobs that would probably be pretty interesting um, for a user. By uh, selecting a job, we have the uh, job details area here beneath the uh, job list. And this is where uh, an individual will be able to get some general information about the job that they have selected. They can also get detailed properties about a job that they have selected. And for people that are familiar with PBS Professional, a lot of the properties that you see here are actually the same properties that you would get from running in the command line QSTAT minus F job ID. Um, this is a benefit for people who are used to the command line because we're doing our best to expose as much of that relevant information in the GUI as possible. We also provide a quick uh, way to do quick filters because this list can get pretty long and sometimes you might very, you know, very very quickly it might come to you, you know, what the key letters of uh, the property you're looking for is. You could just type it in and, and get it like I have here with uh, asking for memory. Over here on the Files tab is where you'll actually see files that are associated with the job. And uh, the, way, the way we kind of keep track of things here is regardless of what phase the job is in, and by phases I mean the files have been staged prior to the job being submitted, 
to the job has been submitted and now the, the files are actually on the execution nodes uh, back to the job being finished and then the results being brought back to the staging area, we follow those files every step of the way, kind of abstracting that whole uh, process uh, from the users. So essentially, you know, they don't really necessarily, they have the ability to know where the files are located because we tell them, but in essence, simply by clicking on their job, they will be able to view the files in whatever state they're in right here in front of them. So right now we're clicking on a job that has finished. And I'd actually like to, here we go. Here's a simple OptiStrip job that had ran successfully. You'll notice all kinds of output that was created by OptiStrip. Um, one of the benefits that um, Compute Manager has is a pretty powerful file viewer and editor um, that has the ability to view, um, view results in, in, in various supported formats. And by support, supported formats, I mean file extensions that a browser can understand and even going further there. Uh, further there, I could say that if there is a plugin, specific plugin that a solver has for some of the um, output that it generates, uh, Compute Manager will embed that into the viewer. And I'll give you a demonstration of this. So see for here, you know, here I clicked on an HTML file that was generated uh, for my office script job. And you'll notice um, um, here on the right that I'm actually able to view those, uh, view that HTML in HTML form. And so this is pretty nice to, to, to be able to see. I can uh, expand this file viewer and actually get kind of a closer look at it. I could even um, click edit and modify it and actually then save that if I wanted to. Um, uh, the different uh, formats are supported. Um, text that can be viewed as text. Uh, if uh, I had a Hyperview player installed, H3D uh, related stuff could be played in the Hyperview player through this. And so this can be pretty, this can be pretty uh, useful for working with uh, files and data uh, in uh, real time, honestly, while the job is running and even afterwards. Uh, you could, uh, you know, one of the uh, cool cases that could be uh, addressed by this is say you had just finished a job, um, maybe there was one or two modifications to an input deck that needed to be made for you to maybe feel like you had a successful next iteration. You could very quickly um, double click on, you know, double click on one of those files, make, you know, make a quick modification to it, save it, and then right click, resubmit the same job. So kind of moving away from uh, monitoring, because that kind of just covers things at a, at a pretty high level, I'd like to go into a little bit more about the remote file browsing functionality that exists in Compute Manager. And so one thing that I was kind of uh, um, showing uh, in, in uh, introducing job submission and the job monitoring was that um, we have remote file browsing functionality kind of integrated throughout uh, the entire interface. And the reason being is, as I'm sure you notice, uh, it's very useful to have the ability to um, browse files when you're getting ready to submit a job. You're, you know, able to grab locally, but you're also able to work with files that are remotely staged, and this happens to be the case for a lot of uh, a lot of customers, especially in bigger organizations where they have shared file systems. Um, it's it's also imperative that while the job is running, that you have the ability to. Um, view and work with the files and data that is being generated by the solvers. But it also comes, you know, there can also come a time when you need to have maybe a more fo focused view, kind of removing the way, you know, submission and monitoring and, and being able to just work with the files directly. And so we created this, uh, this uh, remote file browsing page as well. The same functionality that you have here is the same function functionality that you have within all the different elements uh, of the of Compute Manager. By that I mean submission and monitoring. You can um, multi-select folders and conduct basic operations on them, such as delete. You could download these as a zip or even zip them in place. And I'm doing this by uh, right-clicking, basically invoking a context menu, which is something that we're all very familiar with, with um, file um, managers on Mac OS X, Linux, and Windows systems. Here too, you have the ability to work with files and uh, view those files in the file viewer. 
you notice now because I, you know my uh, Google Chrome is what I'm using. It supports uh, PDF viewing. I was the file viewer then um, supported PDF viewing, and so by double clicking on a PDF, I actually could start viewing it here within the viewer. Okay, thanks, Dan. So that's the basic functionality of the HyperWorks uh, Enterprise Compute Manager. Why don't we switch over to uh, you, Venkat, and uh, can you tell me more about the, the new capabilities, uh, especially the ones that affect productivity uh, in this new release? So, so, so Rich, um, so, so Compute Manager was just a recent release, so what we are already working on, we already have other beta capabilities uh, in the area of results visualization. What Compute Manager does right now is allow you to submit jobs and monitor jobs and so on and so forth. But we are also at the same time working on results visualization. What I mean by that is often when people submit jobs, they generate huge files and they don't want to download the files locally to view the results. So, and uh, there could be 20 gigabytes of results or so on uh, that is on the cluster. They want to visualize the data. So this is, this is some of the beta capability. Um, so, so I'm, I'm going to walk you through the, through the case where we submit a job again. It's, maybe it's an OptiStruck job. It could not need not be an Altair solver. It could be LS Dyna. It could be a CFD solver, or it could be say Abacus or whatever. It doesn't really matter. So, so after you submit the job, uh, that's what this is doing right now. While the jobs are running, often what you want to do is monitor the results. And let me skip forward, you know, so already seen the job submission part, but that's not the exciting part because Dan has already shown that. Yeah, so. so what you can do is, this is the part, you can, uh, once, once the job is running, while the jobs are running basically, what you can do is uh, open a file, uh, like double click on open a file and you can browse what is there inside the co contents, like the table of contents of the file and you can plot things like how is your optimization running or how is your simulation going on? You can create these interactive uh, XY plots, uh, for example, and that's what we are doing. So this is a optimization study. So, so you are looking at how many iterations is taking because you know people run these huge optimizations that might take too, so many cycle times that it might run days and days. So while the job is running, you want to know uh, how, the, how, the, uh, how the simulation is going on. You want to look at some metrics. Uh, what was your objective? Maybe your objective was reduce the weight uh, of this uh, uh, component or you know, increase the lower the stress value and so on and so forth. These are plots to simulation engineers, it will make sense. So these are some of the capabilities that we are working on in beta capability mode. Other things are uh, just like uh, plotting, we are also doing uh, uh, animations. So for example, you can open up a results file, uh, select Maybe it has 1,000 simulation steps in the results file, and what you want to do is just look at how the last few time steps of the uh, simulation look like graphically, like a 3D model. Uh, you want to look at some animation. You want to look at some contour. And the whole idea is rather than download this 20 gigabyte file locally to your desktop, generate a much smaller file server side and then visualize it using our plugin, for example. So these are. Uh, these are some of the capabilities that we are working on right now. Uh, so, uh, and another example, similar example would be something like a cell phone drop test. Um, so, so let me switch further to that area, and you know somebody might go through Compute Manager and do the simulation, and after the simulation is done, or while the simulation is doing, they want to know how the cell phone drop test is running. So, so they will. They want to look at the stress contours to see, you know, is it going to break or not, and they can uh, view all these results directly through through the compute manager interface. So these are some of the new data capability that will be released shortly over the next few months. That's very exciting, Venkat. So you're not just showing a a downloaded movie; you're able to interact with that 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 compressed or that small file without bringing over that that 20 gigabyte. Um, Data so there are there are two aspects to it. So, yeah. so let me so when we say results visualization, so one is say there is a 20 gigabyte results file sitting somewhere on your cluster, right? Through this table of contents widget, we are basically telling you sort of sort of like a table of contents of a Word document or 
uh, or a PDF document, we say, okay, this is what the table of contents contains. What do you want to generate out of it? Oh, I just want to look at the last few pieces of slices of data. So we generate what is known as a compact page 3D format, and this, and we have a plugin. So what gets downloaded in this case? It gets in this case, it is going to get downloaded, but it is a much smaller file. It goes into your temporary internet folders directory. So instead of downloading a 20 gigabyte file, maybe you're downloading just a few megabytes of files and viewing it. But the viewer itself is a 3D plugin right inside the browser. Uh, so that is results visualization where you're creating smaller files and then downloading it. The other part is remote visualization. And what we are doing in that area is, I don't have uh, things to demo in that area right now, but what we are doing there is using through the web browser itself, uh, we basically just send the pixels over as opposed to uh, running a full-blown application. So through the web portal itself, uh, we will remotely uh, show the application running on the cluster. So all you are sending is the pixels instead of the huge 3D amount of data. So that is also something that we are working on and we expect that to be out in the next few months. So, so what we see is, uh, Besides the job submission and monitoring, these all things will be value-added capability that will be very useful uh, to the end users, the CAE users or the simulation users who are actually using this clusters to run their huge jobs. So Venkat, it sounds like the direction you're moving is to help the user with their uh, total workflow versus just the to help them just, just run their jobs. Is that a fair description? Yes, not just running up the job. So after you run your jobs, you want to visualize the results. The other kinds of capability is you want to manage their data. So in, in the sense that, imagine say you are a user and you are modifying version one. Say, say the cell phone model that I talked about, right? So you, you worked on the version one of the model and then you ran the model and you added it uh, to a repository. So we are also going to do data management of it. So somebody else, uh, from a, a colleague from a different location could check out that model, you know, make some changes, and uh, he can run his own model. So you will get sort of uh, the, the traceability, who did what when. Uh, you, you are able to track multiple versions of the model. This is the data management part of it. So you not only are, so you are uh, getting the, uh, it, the traceability, which version was modified by whom. You manage the results. And in addition to that, so that is the data management part, Managing the workflow, meaning processes. Uh, so, for example, in an organization, uh, somebody might ask a simulation. Say you're the engineering manager, right? You know, uh, so you're maybe an engineering manager of an automotive company, and you're manufacturing, say, some kind of bumper, for example, for all the OEMs, the big three, Detroit OEMs. And you notice that one of these bumpers are failing in the field. Uh, you get reports that warranty issues and so on. You're seeing that it is failing. So as an engineering manager, you might create a workflow and say, hey, Mr. Uh, simulation guy, can you analyze to me this, this part for me and tell me why it is failing? So you might initiate a workflow through this web browser or web portal, and that will essentially um, guide the user through different users through the different uh, parts of the workflow. So, so the engineering manager assigns a task to the CAE analyst who might actually do the simulation. Then after the simulation done, he might assign it to the test engineer who might you know, compare the actual simulation results with physical tests done in the lab, uh, and then a report might be generated. So we are also working on those kinds of workflows. Nothing to do with HPC, but these are the workflows that happens in an organization, right? So we are trying to tackle the data management side. We are trying to tackle the workflow side. And then at a, at a chief engineer level uh, or at a director level, often people want to know the metrics. Right. So say so maybe I'm supplying bumpers, uh, automotive bumpers to say five different OEMs. I want to know what are the status of those. You know, uh, uh, are those bumpers on track? Do they meet the metrics? I have some key performance indicators that I am tracking. I want to view those dashboards. For for example, say you are the chief engineer in an automotive company, and you want to know you have several cars and trucks, light trucks. You want to know what is the crash rating of each one of those. Is it a five-star rating? Is it a three-star rating? As you are developing the product, because uh, these cars get uh, developed over several uh, man months, uh, several months, and you want to monitor how how the crash performance is improving or how the noise and vibration performance is improving over a period of time. 
you want a dashboard view. So we, through our web portals, we are targeting those types of use cases too. So it's just not job submission, but it is data management, workflow, and also dashboarding. So Venkat, you know, uh, you're out there with, with these solutions and you're showing these kind of beta capabilities. What kind of reaction are you getting from customers? So, so the product that is out first is Compute Manager that got out released a couple of months ago. So, so later this year we will have uh, more products out. So, so I mean, people are excited about it, uh, and, and in the sense that one reason they are excited is because you know Altair is unique in this area, in the sense that we make uh, HPC products like PBS Professional that you are aware of. We make uh, we develop. Uh, compute manager or web-based products that interfaces to HPCs. Plus, we also make these simulation tools like our own solvers, Radios and OptiStruct. So, and then in addition to all of that, we have about 500 plus engineers in Altair who do these simulations. You know, we do projects for aerospace companies and automotive companies doing all these simulations and these analysis. So, we bring pretty unique experience. And when they when they see this coming from us, they are frankly excited and and. And uh, you know, some of them I would say are, are really can't wait for us to finish the development and the QA and the beta before we can actually install it. Uh, in fact, even Compute Manager, uh, even before it was Mark released for production, you know, it was already up and running at several uh, customer locations during the beta period because people were so excited about the project. And uh, so that is what we expect of the other products also as and when they become available. All right. Well, hey, that's it, folks. That's it for the Rich Report. Stay tuned for more news and information on high-performance computing.